financuje a jménem společnosti Antis.cz vás dnes vítá. A možná jste už zaznamenali, že naše společnost se nedávno stala zatím výhradním distributorem z našeho webce na českém trhu a moc se těšíme, co tato spolupráce do budoucna přinesla. A každopádně informace na úvod v rámci GDPR bude tento webinář nahrávaný, třeba i pro ty, kteří to dnes nestihli. A jak jste si určitě všimli, tak webinář bude probíhat angličtiny. Chci vás ještě poprosit, abyste měli počas prezentace vypnuté mikrofony a na komunikaci s námi používali čat. Ať už těžší mě nebo v angličtině, naše produktová manažerka pro značku Lexa Eva Čalokovská se pokusí na ně odpovědět, případně ještě na konci na to bude samozřejmě prostor. A nyní bychom začali s Lexa prezentací, které povede Andrew Amorepi, což je regionální sales manager. Uh, hello Andrew, good morning again. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we are ready and excited to hear you, so you can start if you're ready. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, attending. Uh, thanks for participating in this presentation. Uh, so my name's, as the a, as a first slide shows, uh, my name's Andrew Marati. Uh, so I've worked uh, with Lexar as a regional sales manager for Central and Eastern Europe uh, for the last uh, three and a half, four years. Uh, prior to that, I was at Micron for 20 years uh, and I was part of the team that established the uh, crucial brand in Europe. Uh, so between Lexar, Micron and another previous company uh, back in the day, I've been, I've been in this industry for roughly 30 years, approaching 30 years. So, um, so yes, I've, I've been around for some time. Um, so today I'd like to uh, present to you Lexar. Uh, most of you uh, will know the Lexar brand, uh, but uh, Lexar has moved on from where it was historically to where it is today. So, um, so I'll take you through the presentation. If you have any questions, you can either ask right away or we can leave it to the end of the presentation. Uh, but either way, open to questions, anything that I can uh, that I can answer, I'll try to answer. So, okay, so let's start. Um, just to start with a little uh, uh, history of Lexar. So Lexar has been around since 96. So give or take, it's approaching that uh, 30 year mark, 25 years plus. Um, so um, in 2017, uh, Lexar was acquired by a company called Longsys. Longsys is roughly a two and a half to three billion dollar uh, company based in uh, Shanghai and Shenzhen in China. And they purchased Lexar from uh, Micron Technology, who had, um, Le who had purchased Lexar and had it for roughly Give or take, I was there at the time. Give or take, it had Lexar for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years, something like that. And as you may recall, if you've been in the industry for a while, which uh, you probably have, uh, Lexar was predominantly a, a cards and USB manufacturer. Uh, and they were an American company based in San Jose. And um, and that's what they focused on retail market uh you know the big retailers the high street retailers uh based all over the world and they focused on memory cards and usbs and readers and accessories and all that uh but since then uh longsys expanded into ssd and memory DRAM, uh, which i'll get into a little bit uh, later on with our product portfolio uh, but they focus on the cha on different channels to historically what Lexar had, which was you know your big high street uh, shops, and they focused on uh, B two C like e-tail, B two B integration, basically the the broader channel, uh, and they started taking SSD and DRAM into this broader channel. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background of Longsys. So as I mentioned, Longsys is based in Shanghai and in Shenzhen. They are a manufacturer of product and they heavily 
invest in uh, R&D. Um, so uh, they tend to have really good, and not only because I, I'm with Lexar now, but they tend to have really good products, well-built products uh, with extremely low failure rates. Our quality is excellent and tend to be with uh, some leading edge uh, technology as well. So um, Longsys specializes in that whole R&D uh, field. And they actually provide memory to a lot of, uh, some of it also to Lexar's competition as well. Uh, they provide uh, components and things like that. So, um, so Longsys has been uh, around for 25 years and they're the umbrella company. So they basically own, Lexar is a division of the Longsys group. Um, so that's a little bit of background on um, Lexar and, Lox, and Longsys and where it's moved from um, in the last, say, 25 years. So as I mentioned, uh, Lexar is historically uh, cards and USB, but since, uh, say, even 2017, when um, Longsys purchased Lexar from Micron, uh, they started moving into uh, at the SSD uh, category and also the memory category. So um, they started developing uh, SATA drives and the NVMe market M.2s and uh, started engaging the um, uh, the, the, the market with SSD and memory. Uh, so that started in 2018 and 2019. In 2020, so I started with uh, Lexar at the end of 2019. So, yeah, so we're approaching, I think, 2021, 20, Yeah, so I'm approaching four years with them, three and a half years. And uh, when I started with them, they had very little market share in Europe uh, in terms of SSD and memory. And so I started end of 2019 and then COVID hit in February 2020. So it kind of stopped everything for about six months because nobody knew what they were doing. We all lived through COVID and I think the first few months definitely of COVID, we didn't know what was happening. So. Uh, so nothing was done really for um, 2020, first half of 2020. Uh, but in 2020, um, Lexar's aim was always to uh, engage in um, in the, the the gaming channel as well, because uh, commodity DRAM, so your standard DRAM, DIM, and SO DIM, uh, we've got the complete lineup of that. You know, DDR4, DDR5. And that's always available. But gaming DRAM, as we know, uh, and as a lot of customers will tell you, is already or is becoming a much bigger percentage of memory sales, of your memory sales. Uh, probably with most customers, uh, gaming memory is probably higher, uh, at least in profitability, etc than your standard uh, memory category. So anyway, so in 2020, uh, Lexar started focusing uh, heavily on uh, gaming memory. Uh, we introduced, like as an example, you know, your uh, micro SD XC card, uh, you know, which is your like Nintendo card um, and uh, some uh, external SSD where the market you know, the market on external SSD is growing because, you, it's, you know, the pricing is a lot closer to your traditional hard drives. Uh, so the, the portable SSD, external SSD is becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, we introduced uh, a gaming uh, SSD, uh, portable SSD. And then uh, the NM620, which we still carry today, uh, which is an NVMe uh, Gen 3 um, SSD drive. And um, what Lexar figured out pretty quickly, uh, including with uh, my sales team, is that uh, 
the M.2 or the NVMe space of SSD is uh, the most profitable side of SSD. And as you, as you probably, probably know, SATA is moving to NVMe. So over time, NVMe will be a much bigger, including unit. It already is in terms of revenue. It's a bigger category than SATA. But even in terms of units, NVMe will become uh, much bigger than SATA. So NVMe is where uh, Lexar has focused because that's where the market uh, has gone and continues to go to. So that's 2020 and 2021. Uh, 2022 and 23, as I mentioned, uh, Lexar's uh, focus has been on NVMe drives. So we introduced the NM800, which continues to be a Gen 4 drive. Uh, and uh, so, so the NVMe uh, 620 was Gen 3. So this was Gen 4, uh, including the NM710 and the NM790, which are tremendously great selling product, uh, excellent specs, excellent pricing, excellent positioning, uh, great performances, uh, almost, I'm, I'm, I'm touching wood at the moment, but uh, almost uh, no failure rates, so extremely good product. And we've been able to successfully penetrate uh, the markets that we have entered. So for the for Czech for the Czech Republic, um, so Asbest hasn't really carried Lexar before. Uh, so we only started a couple of months ago, uh, two to three months ago. So we're just beginning to uh, start selling uh, Lexar, uh, the Lexar portfolio, uh, in the Czech Republic. Um, but NVMe is a big focus for us. And also at the bottom left-hand corner is our Aries uh, DDR5 and DDR4, because DDR4 continues to be uh, um, a high selling uh, product. Um, that's our gaming range of product, which is beginning to take some really nice traction in the market as well. So, um, so that brings us up to speed with, uh, with, the, with the key product launches that we've had since Lexar uh, purchased, uh, since Longsys purchased Lexar from Micro. So as you can see, it's moved from a, a card and USB manufacturer to a dominantly SSD and memory manufacturer. So that's the kind of the new Lexar of today is SSD and DRAM, including cards and USB. Uh, going here so commitment to quality uh, as i've mentioned uh, our rma rates are fantastic uh, in terms of very low rma rates uh, we get great reviews on quality of product uh, you know when they strip down the product the reviews always come out uh, really well uh, longsys has a big focus on on uh, the quality of the product and and that translates translates into uh, Lexar's product. So uh, really good uh, quality and product. Uh, then, yeah, just really briefly in certifications and quality assurances, you know, ISO, CE, all of those markings that comply with, uh, with uh, EU uh, requirements, you know, it has all of that. Um, so just in terms of where we're based, so yeah, so, um, Although Longsys is based in Shenzhen and now it's actually bigger in Shanghai, uh, it actually is legally uh, an American company uh, because its uh, headquarters is based in San Jose, which is uh, traditionally where Lexar is from. Uh, so that's where it's headquartered uh, from a legal perspective, uh, and therefore we're based all over um, all over the world. Um, so a bit of brand marketing and portfolio product. Uh, so these are some of the ex uh, exhibitions that uh, we participate in. So, you know, we were at Computex earlier in the year. Uh, I just finished doing uh, Gamescom in Cologne, you know, the, the gaming event. I just got back from IFA as well. 
in uh, Berlin. Uh, you know, so we do all these uh, shows uh, all over the world. I see CES coming up in uh, January, I believe. Uh, these are some of the design and media awards that we've had. Uh, so, like I said, you know, you can check online and stuff like that. As I've mentioned in the Czech Republic, uh, you know, we've we've just arrived to the market. Uh, but if you check in more established markets, you know, like Germany, Benelux, uh, you know, Poland as an example, um, you know, the reviews that we've had have, have actually been really good. Um, I'll just skip through that. This is just continued media awards, even for gaming, for SSD. Um, and uh, and now into the portfolio of product. So the, the way we break it down is basically you've got your Lexar professional product with your higher end uh, uh, specifications of our portfolio uh, that fits into that uh, segment of the market. We have Lexar Gaming, of course, uh, you know, the portable SSD, as I, as I mentioned, uh, some of our NVMe drives, and of course, gaming memory. Uh, you've also got uh, cards um, and USB as well, if it's needed for gaming, that less so. Huh? So it's, it's mostly uh, NVMe drives, potentially portable SSDs and gaming memory. Uh, and then of course, uh, home and office, uh, which is your your standard uh, workhorse type uh, product. Um, so to get more into the portfolio, uh, so we've got memory cards, as I mentioned, that's uh, Lexar's history is uh, in uh, cards and USB. So uh, micro SD cards, SD cards, not a complete portfolio of SD cards, but, uh, but a complete portfolio of micro SD cards, uh, USB flash drives, complete, Portfolios, basically your good, better, best, so your lower end, middle, middle, and higher end type USBs, uh, SSDs, everything included from two and a half inch SATA, M.2s, uh, portable SSDs, and we've also got some accessories like you know SSD enclosures um, uh, and and that kind of product. On the memory side, uh, all uh, gaming. Uh, DDR4, DDR5, uh, uh, which are, are two uh, names, uh, gaming names within uh, within the gaming uh, memory segment is called Ares and Thor. Uh, so, you know, from the mytholo uh, mythological Greek uh, names. And uh, then, yes, to the right-hand side here is just your standard uh, memory for you know, upgrades, uh, integration business, uh, you know, that kind of business. Um, and then your card uh, readers and accessories. So, um, yeah, just just that. Uh, USB flash drives, as I mentioned, uh, there's entry level, your middle mainstream and uh, high performance USB drives. Uh, you know, you, you will eventually see the entire list uh, offered to you if it hasn't already been offered to you. Uh, and then you can see what, uh, uh, where, where the type of product that you need. But anyway, it's all encompassing, uh, good, better, best. So entry level, mainstream, high performance USB. Um, so on SSD, uh, so we've got the two and a half inch uh, SATA drives. Uh, so two models there. You've got the entry level, which is called the NQ series. Uh, and uh, that's called the NQ100 uh, entry level. So standard um, uh, performance, you know, uh, around that 500 megabits per second. And then you've got your NS100, which is uh, slightly more reliable, more mainstream. Uh, and uh, both those drives really sell well. The NQ may be more in integration and the NS100 more for uh, the broader market, you know, for upgrades, for uh, even for integration. Actually, we get uh, we get those as well. And then our big segment, uh, which is the M.2 or NVMe. Uh, drives where we've 
got uh, Gen 3 and Gen 4 drives. Um, and we have our top seller in the uh, uh, Gen 3 space is the NM620. And the really high seller in the uh, Gen 4 space is the 710 and the 790. Uh, so the 710 has a little bit reduced uh, specs. And the 790 uh, actually has um, really good specs. Uh, and then you've got the NM800 Pro, which uh, the specs are a little bit uh, uh, higher on that. Uh, you know, it's got DRAM on board as well. Uh, so it's got a better cache, um, higher priced, of course. Uh, but our, our volume drives are NM790 and M NM710 for Gen 4 and then M620 uh, for Gen 3. Um, so I wanted to share, I wanted to share this, uh, this uh, GFK data with you. And, uh, and I, I, we took Poland as the example of uh, the uh, share that we've got in the Polish market. So the first thing to say is, uh, so it's, this is for NVMe, right? So NVMe, is roughly 50% of the unit uh, share in, in Poland of total SSD, because you've still got quite a bit of SATA. Uh, but it's higher in revenue in, in Poland. It's probably 60% NVMe revenue versus 40% SATA. So if you look at this graph, uh, so you've got the, the dark blue here, at, you know, 34.4 is Samsung. So you've always got Samsung roughly, you know, in, in a lot of markets, you've roughly got them anywhere between 30 to 40 percent of the market. And that's and that's what you see in Poland as well, roughly 35 percent of the market. Then you've got these smaller players like A Data, 5 percent, Crucial, 3.8 percent, Good Ram, which is based in Poland, right, uh, with 2.8 percent. Good Ram will be better in uh, SATA. Uh, smaller in NVMe. And then you got Kingston in the black, right? At 16.3. And then you've got Lexar at 22.4. And then you've got the smaller players, WD at the bottom, etc. So if you look at this graph, so if you take the first two column columns, you can see January 22 to Ju July 22, Lexar had 3.7% 3 of the NVMe share in Poland. And the reason for that is that we started in 2022. So uh, basically, you know, we were, we were, so 2020, uh, forget it. It was a write off, there was COVID, nothing really happened. 2021, we started engaging the market. 2022, we started ramping up. And in the second half of 2022, we really started to see increased sales. Uh, so if you look, uh, at the first half of January 22, it's 3.7. But then if you look at January to July 2023, it's already jumped up to roughly 20%. So this is an example of, uh, you know, a market or a country where we've gone in, uh, you know, we've done a really good job. And then from nowhere, uh, you know, 6.3% in July 2022, to 22% in July 2023. So, um, you know, like I said earlier, we've just engaged uh, the Czech market. Uh, so, you know, hopefully we'll start seeing some real engagements uh, in the market. So Lexar will make the investments that it needs to make, uh, you know, to make the brand successful, to work with our customers, directly or indirectly via ASBIS. Uh, so we're here to, um, you know, to promote the product, work with you guys to sell the product, promote the product, uh, market the product, uh, you know, and all those kind of activities. So, you know, come forward with, uh, with what you need. We'll, we'll also, uh, you know, work with Ava and, and the team at ASBIS to um, to run promotions and uh, and those kind of activities, 
you know, to start making a bit of noise, uh, you know, in the Czech market so that, um, you know, we can start um, building, building the brand. Uh, the timing is not perfect because, as you know, or might not know, uh, you know, uh, NAND pricing, which is cards, USB, SSD, storage product, basically, the pricing is increasing like crazy at the moment. Uh, and also DRAMs beginning to get impacted um, because what the big OEMs have done, like Samsung, some of the big Chinese manufacturers, uh, you know, Hynix, uh, Micron, et cetera, about six, seven, eight, nine months ago, they started pulling production back uh, because they were losing a lot of money, oversupply and less demand. So now they've pulled back uh, production and now we're beginning to see uh, supply beginning to tighten and um, and demand being pretty okay. Uh, so therefore the pricing is going up because there's less supply on the market. Uh, but that won't stop us from uh, from doing activities and promoting product, uh, you know, in Czech market. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that slide. Uh, memory, uh, how are we doing for time? Uh, okay, I'll try and speed things up a little bit. Uh, memory, uh, again, uh, entry level is your, you know, DDR4, DDR5, uh, you know, 3200 on DDR4, 48, 5600 on DDR5, uh, including DIM and SODIM. Uh, and then you've got our mainstream product, which is... Um, you know, your non, non RGB, let's say, uh, product, a little, little bit lower spec product. And then you've got your high performance uh, product, which tends to be RGB, uh, higher specs, you know, DDR5, 6400, uh, some of the DDR4 up to 4000, uh, and things like that. So, yeah, so single modules and kits as well. Uh, so, anyway, so you know all that stuff. Um, so gaming is another focus product for us. Uh, portable SSDs, uh, I'll just touch on that briefly, uh, because actually we're start, like I said earlier, we're starting to see an acceleration of demand for portable SSDs. Um, so I think, uh, the price point, uh, has reached a level now where it kind of makes sense to uh, purchase an external SSD uh, versus a hard drive. With that said, as I mentioned just prior to that, uh, NAND pricing is going up. Uh, so, uh, so that cost or that price will go up as well. So we'll see if the portable SSD demand uh, slows down a little bit. My opinion, it won't, uh, because you know, once you have that momentum, it tends to accelerate, and the price differential is not enough to uh, to impact a purchase of you know SSD versus a hard drive. So, but anyway, so portable SSD, we're seeing an acceleration of uh, of demand in in external hard drives. Uh, card readers and accessories, I won't spend any time on that, uh, just for you to know that, you know, with our USB and card uh, range, we also have these accessories. And again, the, 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 the way uh, Lexar markets its product, as a lot of companies do, as I'm sure you do, is you have your, you know, your entry level, your mainstream, and then your high performance category. Um, uh, again, uh, so uh, gaming, you have the full range of uh, non-RGB, slightly slower spec, and RGB, higher spec product, but including on uh, the SSD side, you've got this external SL660 Blaze as an example, which is an R RGB type SSD, uh, NM800, uh, higher high-end high-end uh, NVMe product, and the NM790, which is good specs, you know, 7,400 uh, read and write, 6,500. So uh, these are 
pretty good performing drives even for the the gaming space um and then you know on the card you've got as an example this micro SD card as well um so i just wanted to let me just go back to this yeah i just wanted to uh let you know about our uh portal on um lexar's uh, uh website um and and we can make this presentation available to you so um so you can have all of this information if we can actually uh maybe put it onto a, a pdf rather than a powerpoint because it's a, it's a pretty big uh it's a pretty big density capacity type presentation but i wanted to let you know about lexar's portal which is based on the you know resources.lexar.com and the username and password is exactly the same as that lexar vip and on there you can uh capture uh, all the 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 documentation the images the product and use images packaging images uh, reviews, PR documents, uh, uh, product setup sheets, all of that is available on uh, on this portal, on this resources portal. And there you can pull all the information uh, that you need when you um, line list all of this product. Um, so that's available to you. Of course, besides that, I know you'll all have your own marketing departments and your own creatives are made internally and stuff like that. But we can also do some of that work for you, you know, like banners, and, uh, images that, uh, that you know, you need to be a little bit different to what's available on this portal. We can work on all of that. Uh, ask and, uh, and uh, we, can, we can work on it. So, but I just wanted to let you know about this portal as well, which is important. Um, and I think that's it. I tried to keep it uh, quite brief. I think that was 35 to 40 right. minutes. Uh, and I think that's all from my side. Okay, Andrew, thank you very much. Uh, for others, uh, if you didn't catch anything, don't worry, you will get all like crucial information and separate an email after this webinar uh, with the links and everything. Uh, and now if anyone has any questions, please type it in the chat or ask directly. We will try to answer it. If uh, if anybody has questions later on, anyway, you can always feed these, uh, you know, uh, to Ava and stuff like that. Then we can discuss them, and we we can reply as as needed, you know. Um, so if anything comes up later on, I actually would have one question. Uh, when you spoke about internal SSDs, are there uh, some of them compatible with, for example, PlayStation Five? So uh, yes, they are. So um, you've got these um, M.2s and also the cards. You know the card that I mentioned earlier. Uh, those are all compatible with the uh, with the PlayStation Five. And actually, uh, we can actually send a little bit of material around the PlayStation Five and and the product that's compatible with it, that's specific to it. Uh, but the answer is yes. That product is compatible with it. Okay, we have one question in the chat. Uh, Jakub Smithville asks, uh, "Do you use memory from micro in all disks?" Right. So, uh, uh, so yeah, at a wafer level. So wafers are before the component. Um, we use uh, YMTC. Some of the Chinese manufacturers. We use Micron, Samsung, Hynix. Uh, we use a, a, a broad, broad um, spectrum of uh, of manufacturers for uh, wafers, so for the components. So to, an to answer the question, yes, we do use Micron, but we use others as well. Um, so you know, with Lexar having, uh, with Longsys having purchased Lexar from Micron, 
they have a very good uh, supply uh, relationship, you know. Uh, but uh, Lexar and Longsys have supply relationships with more than just Micron. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, we have a question from uh, Dr. Sukini. He asks, uh, What's the position of Lexor products in the Czech market? Uh, the products looks good, but uh, the problem is maybe uh, a bit of higher price. For uh, Lexar product being higher priced? Uh, no, it won't. It won't be. So the strategy of sorry, go ahead. No, no. I just wanted to say that we maybe switch to Czech uh, and speak with a customer in Czech, he's okay with this, uh, because uh, it depends how he meant it, like compared to which uh, other products and uh, what actually products does he mean? It's like SSDs, but I'm not sure that I think we stand very good on the Czech market. And as Andrew said, we just started now in Czech market. Of course, you can find some uh, Alexar products on Czech market already before we sent in, but uh, not in the a huge range as we have because we offer the whole portfolio of Alexa. So if you can, uh, Petr Sukeng, please specify the, the your question. It will be very good for us so we can answer it correctly. Meanwhile, I will maybe ask you, Andrew, uh, do you plan uh, any release of new product? I don't know, SSDs, some gaming, uh, this or next year? Uh, yeah, so Ava, we're always developing new product. Um, and so we're uh, coming out with some uh, new drives. And actually, uh, oh, it's probably under ND, uh, NDAs. Uh, but we could uh, actually provide a product roadmap as well uh, on what's coming out on SSD and uh, and DRAM, which you you then can provide uh, to the customers uh, and internally, of course. Uh, but yes, we're constantly developing new drives. Um, so uh, we're thinking about a lot of it's around NVMe and gaming DRAM. Huh? So. Um, the problem is that uh, you don't want to develop too many drives and release them all at once because I'll take the NM620 NVMe drive as the example, uh, and that's a, a Gen 3 drive, and that's been on the market now for two years, maybe, uh, two, two and a half, yeah, two years, let's say two years. So, you know, even in gaming, when you change the, the product too much, you lose that continuity, right? Because you need to start all over again with, okay, you've built up your brand name, which is good, uh, but you've broken that, uh, that link between, you know, one uh, uh, series drive to the next series drive. So the, the point is to keep the drives the successful drives going for a bit longer. So some of our, so I worked for Crucial as an example, right? Or, or Micron. And you know, the, the BX and the MX drives have been around forever, right? They've been around for, I don't know, 10 years now or something like that, seven, eight, nine years. So, so the point is, yes, we're releasing new drives uh, and I can maybe get, We've got it, huh? uh, a roadmap uh, for these drives. I just need to make sure that we can share it with everybody. Um, but assuming we can, I will do. Um, but the point is to keep some of these drives going. So the NM620, the NM790 high and, 7, and the NM710 highly successful uh, uh, product series that will keep going uh, for a while, you know? Um, 
But I'd, I'd like to get back. Uh, so I hope that answers the question. And I'd like to get back to the previous question. So I'm going to make some assumptions here. And uh, just where our pricing is compared to our competitors. So if I go, uh, so let me see. Uh, you can still see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, let me just go back to this uh, uh, this uh, slide. You can see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if so, Lex are uh, in the beginning. Who 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 were our uh, competitors? So uh, Lexar is an A brand for uh, cards and USB because it's been around for almost thirty years, right? So always had pedigree and a history of cards and USB on SSD and especially on DRAM. Let's say gaming DRAM and also uh, standard DRAM. Uh, they don't have that same pedigree. So what were they considered? They were co they're considered a B brand, right? So uh, so uh, we consider ourselves a B brand. So who were our competitors? Our competitors were A Data, Patriot, uh, you know, Good RAM. Um, you know who are the who are the other guys? Anyway, uh, those B brand type uh, competitors. And uh, but but if you go to Poland as an example, which is this slide here, with uh, you know say twenty to twenty five percent share consistently, right in the market, you're no longer over time you're no longer a B brand, okay? So therefore, your competitor, forget Samsung. Samsung's uh, a different player altogether. But your competitors then become uh, Crucial, Kingston, WD. But what's our strategy? Our strategy is to be, is to be more competitive than Crucial, Kingston, WD, all these guys, right? So... So you start as a B brand. So in Czech Republic, we're a no brand, right? We're unknown in the, in the market. So we consider ourselves a B brand. Then we build, we build with investment, with the right partnerships, all that kind of stuff. We build, we do a professional job, and we fast forward, let's say, two years down the road. Hopefully, we become a competitor to Crucial, to Kingston, to all these guys because we've got much bigger share. So in Benelux as an example, which is Netherlands uh, area, all of that, we, we're already at 11% share. I don't have the GFK here to share with you, but through what we've seen, we're at 11% share. So we're already growing. In Germany, which is you know a hard market to penetrate, and we only started in Germany only about really a year ago, we're we're already at that seven, eight, but maybe nine nine percent share. So you know we're be, we're beginning to uh, gain traction, right, uh, and momentum. So to answer that question is you in a no in a in a market where you're a no brand, you're a B brand, right? In a market where you're established, you become an A brand. But the strategy is always the same. In uh, a market where Lexar does not exist, our competitors are your A datas, Patriots, those kind of guys. And so we will compete against them. Uh, in a market where we are more established, again, our competition is the, the, the more the A-ish brands, Crucial, Kingston, but the strategy is to, is to be more competitive than them. So, uh, so I hope that kind of answers uh, the question broadly, right? Uh, our aim is to be more competitive than our competitors. Okay, Andrew, thank you for a very comprehensive answer. Uh, now uh, we have answer from Petr Sukenik. Uh, he was talking about uh, Lexar SSD and M800 Pro. 
So you're going to have uh, products coming crossing borders, basically, right? Uh, but you know, our official and only distributor in in the Czech is uh, Asvis, right? So Asvis will get the, the 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 best terms, the lowest price, everything, right? So the, you guys will you guys will get. Uh, you know, like your entry level mainstream high performance like this, like this uh, slide shows right now, you guys are in the high performance range, right? So you'll get the best from from us. But that's not so then there's another thing, right? Pricing has been increasing, right? So over the last 45 days, even two months, prices uh, beginning has Pricing already started to go up about, uh, I, was, I remember I was on holiday. So in early August, I was already starting to get calls from customers saying, uh, we need product because we're seeing pricing going up, right? So it already started in early August, uh, pricing beginning to move up. So bit by bit, now pricing is really accelerating. So you guys will see cost really going up quickly now huh? uh, because supply is really tightened up. And, and I'm speaking generally, I'm not speaking from a Lexar perspective, I'm speaking from the broader market. So if you purchased an M800 or whatever, a 790, whatever, whatever product it was, a 620, if you purchased that even three weeks ago, it will be 10% cheaper than it is today. And today it will be 10% cheaper than it will be next week. So the, the, the I don't know if that's what the, if that's what impacted this NM800 that was seen in the Czech market that came from abroad. But what I'm saying is, A, you'll always have product that moves around. Uh, that you can't help it, but it will always be minimal product, right? It'll always be some guy that uses it to attract customers to their website, whatever the case may be. But also on top of that, we're in a moment right now in the industry, which impacts all of us, by the way, that pricing an SSD or anything to do with NAND storage and memory DRAM is going up and has been going up and will continue to go up. So uh, if somebody purchased product 
like I said, even a week ago or two weeks ago, it's cheaper than what it is today. And today it will be cheaper than what it is in a week or two weeks time. Uh, pricing's going up and it's going up quickly now. Huh? Uh, so that could also be an impact. So the thing is, what we need to do, Eva, to your point as well, is we check what uh, where this product is from. Um, but what I'm saying is uh, no other distributor and no other um, region will proactively sell into the Czech market. That's what I'm saying. The ones that are proactively and are going, that have a, a broad service uh, investment uh, attention to the Czech market is Asmus. Nobody else. So, yeah. So I don't know if that answers it or not, but uh, you're always going to find one, two, ten units that come from Germany or from, I don't know, Poland or from Netherlands or something that somebody's done something funny, VAT avoidance, whatever. You know, I don't want to say what the reason is for it, uh, but you'll always get little P Amazon sometimes does some crazy things, you know. Uh, so, yeah, you'll find you'll find time to time an issue here and there. What we need to do is go through every single issue and figure out if it's a real problem, you know. I don't know if that answers the question, but hopefully it does. Uh, yes, Andrew, thank you very much. Hopefully it did answer questions, uh, better had. Uh, you're right, the quality uh, comes with the region, region and we, uh, you're right also about that. Asbis is at the moment the only distributor in the Czech market and we are ready to provide the best service and the best quality products. And, and the best pricing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, of course. So yeah, exactly. So yeah, so that that product that entered check won't have anything added to it, right? It'll just be product that entered the check market, maybe at a little bit lower price because it was purchased a month ago. But there won't be any wrapping around that product, right? There won't be any service levels. There won't be any marketing behind it. There won't be any promotions behind it, all that kind of stuff.